There's the successful clothing retailer who loves the high roller perks. And the poor Greek immigrant who amassed more than $30 million in one legendary run. There's the sports gambler, once an illegal bookie in New Jersey, now a member of the Vegas gambling elite. From different worlds, they come to Las Vegas for the same reason explorers climb Everest. It is the ultimate for gamblers, especially the high rollers, who are known in Vegas as premium players. Uh, premium play comprises uh, high rollers that uh, gamble 20,000 in a visit. Uh, there's also 100,000 to 500,000 in a visit. According to industry experts, there are several thousand people who qualify as premium players, but even they are not the most elite of gamblers. And at the very top of that pyramid of premium players uh, are the whales. They gamble uh, anywhere from one million to five million in a typical visit to a casino. Um, there are probably only about 250 whales in the world. But a whale would be the biggest of its species. So if the, the gambler is in, in terms of, uh, if, you, if you want to take it to the plains of the Serengeti, it would be the king of beasts, I guess, or it would be the big bull elephant with the, mo with the longest tusk. It would be the biggest of its kind. So if we're talking gaming, we're talking the biggest gambler. That's the whale. One of the biggest whales to swim the Las Vegas waters is Australian media mogul, Kerry Packer. And this guy, when he comes to town, uh, everybody, you know, he, he causes a lot of meetings to be called because everybody's got to come up with a, how are we gonna handle this guy? Now, this is not Free Willy, this is Free Willy's parents. <laughs> A publicity-shy billionaire, Packer demands to gamble in seclusion. He earns that luxury by wagering millions during each visit, a portion of which the casino usually wins, but not always. During a legendary run at the MGM, Packer reportedly won over $20 million by betting up to $50,000 per hand at blackjack. While the casino was the loser, he is rumored to have shown his appreciation to the dealer by paying off the mortgage on her home. Like Packer, whales are part of an international elite. We like to think that only the State Department has a stronger foreign policy than we do. If you looked at where the, those real high rollers of the whales come from, and that changes with economic cycles. Um, in the 80s, it was the Arab money that was big. There was a lot in South America for a while, and recently it has been from the Far East. The reason that most of the premium play, or a large percent of the premium play, comes out of Asia is that's, that's where a lot of wealth has concentrated. So much wealth, in fact, that even the recent economic crisis along the Pacific Rim has not lessened the casino's efforts to lure the Asian high roller. We have a department here that caters mainly to the Asian customers, Far East customers. We, they speak several different languages, from Cantonese to Mandarin to um, Hokkien to uh, Malaysian and Thai, because we do have to, uh, you know, there's, there are some customers that come here that don't speak any English at all. So it's important for them to, uh, to know that they're going to a place where someone they can at least, you know, be able to uh, communicate. Gamblers in general are notoriously superstitious, a fact the industry is obliged to accommodate. There are more superstitions in a casino than probably anywhere else you'll find anybody per square foot. It's, uh, it's silly, but people live and die by it. White limousines, for instance, are primarily associated with funerals in Asia. Not a good omen for games of chance. You wouldn't want to give somebody a clock for their birthday or their anniversary. Again, that's a sign of, I, I believe, death. So it's, not, it's something that we always have to remember, all these little idiosyncrasies, because it means a lot to, to, to them. And it, it's important for you to have the knowledge of what's, what they're, you know, because they're very superstitious people. Casinos tolerate high-maintenance, high rollers because the payoff is enormous. Less than 5% of Vegas visitors are considered premium players, yet they provide up to 40% of the revenue at casinos who cater to them. Premium players left nearly $1 billion at Vegas tables last year. 
There's probably about uh, seven casinos here in Las Vegas that are now um, really actively pursuing the high roller market, and, and we all do uh, similar things to attract that customer. A customer with extremely high expectations. They're used to uh, the finest service. They have big houses, and it's, it's plural. They have big and beautiful houses. Uh, they have the, you know, the finest cars, the, the finest chefs, uh, the finest wines their own jets in many cases, or they're used to having a, a charter provided. So these are expectations right from the get-go. In the last decade, high-stakes gambling has become an intensely competitive business, with casinos around the globe vying for the same customers. And yet none compare to Vegas. What is it that makes this city a mecca for the most serious gamblers? One reason is discretion. Lots of wives don't know what, uh, what the master of the house is doing. And certainly they're not going to hear it from me. They're probably a fairly high profile uh, individual, or at least they're, they're probably well known because they are, are very wealthy. So discretion is very, very important. It's an expectation. It's a requirement. The second requirement for high roller casinos is money. While the casino will always win over the long haul, they must have the cash on hand to withstand short-term losses. Whales on a lucky weekend can win millions. The third ingredient of the Vegas mystique can be called the cult of money. Vegas fawns on the rich, providing a playground with toys that only the wealthiest can afford. The watch is made by Piaget. There are only eight of them in the world. One is owned by Queen Elizabeth. And for $775,000, you too can own one. Oh, my God, just peace. Uh, you ever go in a bank uh, in your neighborhood and you show them a $100 bill or a store, you show them a $100 bill, and, oh, my gosh, they have to look at it six times. Here, $100 bill is, you know, like a quarter. It really does, you know, it, it's, it's just um, nothing. So people seek this out. There's an excitement. There's a lifestyle. There's a tradition. But when you want to go to the one and only, the original, the mecca for gambling in the world, everybody concedes that it is Las Vegas. The Rio has been traditionally known as a favorite spot for Las Vegas locals, but they recently joined the hunt for high roller gold with over $200 million in upgrades. The Rio, like several other casinos in Vegas, is gambling on its ability to attract the high-end customer. Well, high rollers, as they're known in the business, have always had high expectations of how they're treated and they're treated well because they're a very profitable part of the business. So as that business has become more competitive, uh, it's been sort of a buyer's market. So the customers have asked for more, demanded more, and received more. Competition for high rollers drove the Rio to create a $6 million wine collection, widely regarded as one of the world's finest. It's available to the public, but be very careful which bottle you decide to open. So the most expensive is a lovely 1924 Chateau Mouton Rothschild from Bordeaux in France. And if you want to buy it, if anyone wants to buy it, it's $200,000. We always take $199,000 for cash. Of course, not all high roller tastes are so extravagant, at least not by some standards. Everyone says, what do these people drink? Well, I'll tell you what they drink. Um, the most asked for wine at the moment is Chateau Petrus, 1982, and you can't get that wine under $4,000 a bottle. So that's asked for a lot. Wine collections and high-end restaurants are just part of a casino's arsenal in an arms race for the premium player. The ultimate suite at the Desert Inn, for example, is over 9,000 square feet of pure luxury. Even the bathroom fixtures are gold. From the elegant marble entryway to the private pool, everything is designed for the comfort of those that can afford to play or to pay. On a bad day, you'd have to have at least $500,000 credit line. On a normal day, it would be a million dollar credit line and above to get into that type of accommodation. But we will rent those uh, suites out, which range in size from the biggest ones, uh, from about 8,300 to 9,300 square feet. We will rent them out. We have rented them out. They go for $15,000 a night. But we do provide a butler. <laughs>